Was Christina a bad choice for Civilization VI? Hello everyone, my name is Four Extraordinaire, and I have been asking myself that question for a while now. It should be no surprise that, with Civ VI having more than 50 leaders, there is bound to be a controversial pick every now and then. Especially with Civ VI's tendency to try and distance itself from Civ V, with a far wider focused playstyle and more customization for players with new game modes, bold new leader picks shouldn't be too far off. But interestingly enough, my main gripe with Christina isn't that she has insane and wacky abilities, or that her personality is one-dimensional. In fact, I like her abilities, her personality is very charming, and her outfit is quite striking. Rather, it's the specific inclusion of Christina in Civilization VI, Gathering Storm, that caught some players, like myself, by surprise. To preface this, many people were actually expecting Sweden to be included in the game. In fact, there was an early leak by a user known as Assembling Typhoon on the Civ Fanatics forums, and another user on 4chan that showed early pictures clearly depicting Coupe the Navigator, who would be included in Gathering Storm, and Lee the Maori for the first time ever in the Civilization franchise. Afterwards, many other civilizations were leaked, which unfortunately took the surprise away from a lot of people, but not everyone necessarily knew who would be leading each civilization, point in case being Sweden. Now, it is very possible that Christina was in fact leaked for Gathering Storm, as it had one of the earliest and most prolific leaks that I have ever seen in Civ's history. But I personally shied away from a few of the leaks and speculated on some of the leaders that had not yet been revealed. Finally, when it came time for the first look, I was a bit flabbergasted. It wasn't because I had that personal vendetta against Christina or any of the developers, but as a brief ruler in Swedish history with some controversial actions, her inclusion was shocking to say the least. Civ 6 has not shied away from bringing in new and lesser known rulers to its audience, but I personally think Christina took things a bit too far. Christina was the daughter of Gustavus Adolfus, the leader for Sweden in Civ V. Ironically, despite being one of the most notable Protestants in Europe at that time and a defender of the faith, Christina was devotedly Catholic, which seems antithetical to most of modern Sweden's history. After all, a leader is supposed to synergize well with their nation and represent them. I understand having differences here and there, but this is a complete contradiction when tensions were at their highest near the Thirty Years' War. This is what defined much of her father's legacy outside of his military exploits, and, if this wasn't enough, she also spent much of the treasury on doubling the amount of Swedish nobles, titles, and had to sell crown property to compensate for this. Due to many of her personal conflicts, she abdicated the throne and spent the rest of her personal life going on lavish tours in Europe. Ironically, much of Christina's actual accomplishments happened after she had left Sweden. She is known today for her artistic patronage and dedication to the arts. One of her biggest scandals, however, was no doubt the killing of Mona Ledeci. In October 1657 at the apartments of Fontainebleau, she suspected Jean Rinaldo Mona Ledeci, her master of the house, of being disloyal. After having told Christina that disloyalty should be punishable by death, an hour later she had her guards chase Mona Ledeci around that room and stab him several times before finally killing him. This greatly stained the rest of her life in Europe, and Pope Alexander VII even referred to her as a woman born of a barbarian, barbarously brought up, and living with barbarous thoughts with a ferocious and almost intolerable pride. By no means am I saying that civ leaders should be held up to a particularly high standard, but I think that this combination of attributes and a complete disconnection from her country does not make her a good pick. On the contrary, I do enjoy her design and abilities, with Sweden's focuses on culture and tourism being a very viable and unique way to play the game, but her specific inclusion has always felt very off when there are many other unique Swedish leaders aside from Gustavus Adolfus to include that don't become embroiled in any scandals. However, this is going to be the end of the video today. If you liked the episode, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Do you have any particularly strong opinions on Christina? Are you okay with her depiction? Let me know in the comments section below. Otherwise, this has been 4 Extraordinaire, and I hope you have a great day. Peace.